Hello Bienvenue dans ce nouvel épisode de Motion Café sur les coulisses d'une composition. Nous recevons cette fois l'artiste 3D Taihun Park, qui nous fait l'honneur de nous expliquer son œuvre Driveler, composée dans le cadre du festival Pause 2018. Dans cet épisode, vous allez découvrir notamment le travail du scénario, de l'esthétique, quelques techniques sur Cinema 4D et le moteur de rendu Octane. Et Taehoon nous offre le fichier source de l'une des premières scènes pour que vous puissiez observer les moindres détails. A tout de suite Hi Scan, how are you doing? Really fine, and you? Cool. <laughs> so, thanks so much uh, for your time. You give a, yeah. a really nice gift for us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Yeah, it's an honor to receive you. I think it's your first breakdown in English. Yeah, I was pretty nervous to. It's my first time to. You know, explain in English something. But you are very lucky because in Motion Cafe we are in a French community, but you don't need to okay. speak French today. Today you you explain a breakdown about your driveler composition. I want mm -hmm. to know how did you find some idea for your composition? Uh, ideas, right? Uh, when I yeah, uh, the theme of the Post Festival. 2018 was journey towards destination, mm -hmm. and then uh, we start with the uh, we started with the simple idea, which is journey is our life, and then the destination in the de is the death. But uh, I knew that I am not good at storytelling, so there's one friend who has a lot of ideas and who's really smart and who is studying to be a movie director. Okay. So I asked him to help me for the idea, storytelling. So yeah, he provided me an amazing story for the dribbler and some direction and edit. He, yeah, he edit for the dribbler project. And uh, Ho Chion, it's a director? Uh, he recently is studying and he already directed some K-dramas in Korea. Okay. And yeah, yeah, he's like a film director. And he made the, the storyboard of your composition. Yeah, he also made the storyboard for it. I'll show you, like this. He actually, I, uh, I made. I really like to start with the one style frame. Um, I recently I was really fascinated by the sci-fi movie such mm -hmm. as Ghost in the Shell and Blade Runner. I especially I got so many inspiration from this scene yeah this is so on the scene with my you know dribbler project i really like the dark mood and you know there are so much there are complicated uh, wires connecting to him yeah that scene is really you know, awesome so mm -hmm. i got some inspiration from this reference so i start with this scene and then I said to my friend I really want to put the scene in my project so yeah he made some story and then he draw the storyboard like this it's almost the same but some some part is changed because it's so hard to express and hard to make and sometimes if it's not beauty if I made uh, in the scene 4D yeah you so, we, yeah. We see like uh, the cup of tea of yeah, cup of coffee here with your liquid. And then it was also difficult to, you know, make <laughs> ritual for me. Yeah. And then there's not a lot of time to make some something to. Uh, I don't. I didn't have a time to study and make. So I changed some story a uh, more easier way for me. Just a little different, but the storyline is I just follow the storyline and then. You know, he also gave me the, the direction of the camera, mm -hmm. like zooming out and panning like that. And then also he provide me the storyboard animatic. Yeah. Just like this. For the rhythm, for the mm -hmm. camera, yeah. For the beginning, yeah. I changed it a little bit, but yeah, I normally just I yeah follow this direction which is really 
you know, easy to make. Mm -hmm. When we already made some pre-production process, it's really easy to, you know, just making, making it really easy, easier. And uh, is it a free project? Yeah, the post festival is this was it's really great way to just promote myself. And then uh, at the time I was working at the company, which is Giant Step. I work always late, like uh, 10 or 11 p.m. until. And then I finish after work. I focus on the first post festival mm -hmm. uh, at at home. At home, okay. So you yeah. did uh, this project at your free time. Yeah, I spent my weekends, whole weekend, and even I worked on my project in my vacation. But it was totally worth it. You need also to optimize your time and your composition. We sp I spent three months. Yeah, one month for the pre-production and the two months for the production. So the pre-production, it's the idea, the concept, the storyboard. Yeah, we actually changed a lot. And what's your method to compose a scene? Did you first, did you first prepare the scene, and after you animate each scene, or you you go step by step? First you compose, and you animate one scene, and the next also. And actually, I first made every style frame. I will show you. Yeah. Maybe here. Okay. Yeah. I first made. Uh, the start frame of everything and then I made the animation you can see this a little bit changed <laughs> yeah and you add for your final render you you add some scene also like, yeah of uh, course like the death of the final scene mm. Mm -hmm. yeah oh there's no death yet. it was really beginning and I yeah just wanted to make some I wanted to see just uh, how how it look and the, the aesthetic, the the logical of each scene, the story. Yeah. So, um, and can you explain for us uh, some scene? I think you prepare mm. for, for Motion Cafe a file. Okay, yeah. Let's start with the building scene. Yeah. Actually, I use the scatter, which is really amazing function in Octane. Because I don't, when I you know, clone something, I use the cloner. But the scatter is just like a cloner, but it's much faster. And even we clone a million objects, it's still fast. Yeah, I will show you yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just. Uh, at first, I made five different types of building. Yeah, just like this. And then I'll put them all into the scatter. And I generated from this plane. A simple plane. And then I wanted to generate my buildings from each point. Mm -hmm. On each vertex. Yeah, each vertex. Yeah. So I set into I name it source. And then there's surface. I'll put into the surface. Yeah. And then you can see the beautiful building. <laughs> yes. That actually we need to fix the uh, the direction. To fix the direction, um, we can change the up vector. Although I changed this, uh, it's not working. So to change the direction, we should uh, set normal angle align to zero. And then, as you can see, we can change the direction. Yeah. And then, if I set one here, yeah, I can see the right direction. But the problem is they are upside down. Yeah, you need and to change the rotation. Means, yeah, we can change this to the minus one. Yes, it's so fast, right? Even I set to the 30 and 30, it's still fast. Yeah. You know? But if I do this with the cloner, it's gonna be really crazy. Yeah. And so happy, heavy and slow. And then, yeah, I made the building, but I wanted to connect the 
you know, cables between the building, but I can't see the building in the viewport. So I found that we can see the building in the viewport to change display type to object. Yeah, because it's a problem of the, um, the volume of polygon in the live viewer. Yeah, now we can see, I can't even move. I can't even control the viewport. So easy for the program. Yeah, so I found a great way to see the building. Like, I made some really simple cube. Mm -hmm. It's the same size of the building. Mm -hmm. just, just like this. Yeah. Yeah, and then I... And it's small, small light because for one cube you have six polygons. Yeah, it's just six polygons. I'll show you how it looks. Yeah. Yeah, we have a rear building. And then I copy this, delete them all, and then put the cube into the scatter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're not... We don't want to see in the render view yeah, the cube, just simple cube. And then we want to see this as a in the viewport. Yeah, now we can see the exactly same position. So we can control the, you know, now we can, we know where the building is. Mm -hmm. And then I want to make the shape be more interesting. Yeah, you edit so, uh, the vertex. Yeah, so I selected some vertex and and then pull it a little bit out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Much, much more interesting. And then the problem is it's not changing. So it's, it's kind of bug, I think. Mm -hmm. We have to refresh this <laughs> like that. <laughs> Yeah, and then I mm, just connected the cable like like this. And you made the cable with with a plugin or with handmade? Uh, I that time I didn't know there is some plugin for the yeah, cable, the but I recently I found there are amazing plugin for the cable. So I made it one by one. Yeah, there is the top it so much time. wire uh, plugin by uh, Meg Wilson. Yeah. I can send you the link. Okay. Yeah, it's just simply made the cable like this. Yeah, with yeah. sweep nerves. And that's it. Yeah, but the key is just uh, using the scatter, and then we can control with the simple cube in the viewport. Yeah. So I will show you my scene. Ooh. Really simple. I really like this scene. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. That's it's really why, fast that's render. Why it's a really good idea to share the scene. Yeah. And then I um, made fog with the plane. Yeah. The Shaolin Zheng made a quick tip video for for this, so I'll, I'm not gonna explain about it. Mm -hmm. It's really simple. Yeah, she, he shared his tip in the Motion Cafe, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. He made some cool. tutorial for Motion Cafe, uh, mm -hmm. for tutorial about uh, his uh, types and tricks uh, on every project. Yeah, I, I saw all of them. It was really nice. Yeah, really. And you, you know the Momento site. Momento. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a really amazing website. Yeah. Amazing breakdown, also. Yeah, I wish I wanted to show you to people. Yeah. The Momento TV is kind of a streaming mm. service. The Chinese, so talented Chinese people sharing their ideas. Yeah, and I think for yeah. me, it's one of the best breakdown platform really yeah me too we we see oh. here many oh. it's in it's in oh. chinese but uh, we can we can understand easily 
Yeah, this is amazing product too. Yeah. Yeah. They share their ideas here. We can yeah. see. Right. Yeah, everything here. So I also learned some tips from uh, this this yeah. you know project. Yeah. Explain here the fog with the plane, I think. Yeah, yeah. Even if if they speak talk in Chinese, I don't understand anything, but I can see the screen. And uh, Xia Yuling explain me, he learned these types and tricks on the course of Michael Ringlet in the Learn Square. Ah, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, Learn Square is also an amazing platform. <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing also platform. And Michael really gave a course about motion graphic and cinema 4D, more graph and, uh, and all of uh, this kind of uh, thing. And from Learn Square? Yeah, from on Learn Square. Oh. Yeah. And uh, he gives some types and tricks also for the fog. Yeah, this is really nice website. Yeah, I, I really like I can it. I really like give two calls on Motion Cafe. Okay, I, I think I should see that. Yeah, you need to see. <laughs> like this? There is two parts, the workflow and the animation part. Mm, cool. It looks, everything looks really nice. Of course. Okay, let's move on to the next scene. I this is really simple idea. But I want to just share this to um, audience. Yeah. Um there is something there's one thing is transitioning the the portal, how can I say? Yeah, just here. Yeah, portal scene. And then I made actually render two scenes. One is just blinking, some just normal. This left scene, the mm. character is sitting in the left scene. Yeah. And then the other thing is for the effect, like that. And then I combine it in the left effects. And uh, where did you download this texture? Uh, this texture? Yeah. Uh, I got it from the Beeple's people's website i actually um when i made the scene i used people's modeling file a lot like this scene mm -hmm. i used the, the sci-fi modeling this door and this screen something and then i got it from the people he's really amazing artist and he shared everything here it is you just download his you know project file yeah we can download it's, the project file and we can see uh, all of the resources yeah. techniques and texture it's just amazing yeah i learned a lot from his his project file it's, it's actually really simple his when i open the, his project file it's really simple but this actually he has a strong eye for the you know design and you know the beauty simple technique and, for a great idea yeah it's really i think it's just, the genius. Yeah, I got some texture from his his you know project file. And then I made really simple way with a simple way. Just <laughs> just one character and the cloner. Yeah. I used the cloner and then step effect for this portal effect, mm -hmm. which is really simple. And uh, it's a procedural animation also. Yeah, I don't have to, uh, but I use the key animation. Yeah, but we one... we see we see the amount of your cloner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For the I animation. just made, yeah, and then this is actually it's the same animation, but with using step effect, we can, you know, we can use an offset. And then control, we can control the timing with the spline here, which is so basic in Cinema 4D. Yeah, I made this portal scene simple way, and then I combine it in after after effects. Yeah, like a bus yeah. with blend mm -hmm. mode. Yeah, it's just I use this scene, this effect scene as a screen mode, mm -hmm. and then I just paid out. At some point, yeah. with uh, just normal pass, and then 
the interesting part of this scene is I used RSMB as some interesting fact. This is actually error, you know. Mm-hmm. When something is really extremely changed, the RSMB can read. So it's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's like a bug. It's not. It's the wrong way to use the RSMB actually. But I wanted to use um, this as an effect, like um, he's just distorting places and you know, he's sucking some some places. It's looking like so it's, like a, a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> I really like this. Yeah, this is really, so really interesting. At the base, it's a mistake. Yeah, I made this by mistake. Okay. But I think oh, it's cool. I'll use it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really nice. Okay, and, and then in, in with with this way, you made the transition between two scenes. Yeah. Between two scenes, the next thing scene is um. This is also I made two scenes. Yeah. He transitioned from the lab to the nature, and then I made two scenes, and then yeah, just I. Use the fade in and fade out animation here. Yeah. yeah, just like this. I made this scene and then this scene and just combine here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like this. I just fade out with cool. some point. It's it's just a, a cut. Yeah. And then let's move to the the next thing. It's it's one Just it's this. one of my favorite scene. Oh really? Yeah, really. Yeah, I use the camera projection in this scene, mm-hmm. but I actually I didn't have to do this because it's totally flat. But I got these ideas from Raw Marks, which is really the famous scene for the users. Do you know Raw Marks? Yeah, I know it. Yeah, I knew it also uh, his astronauts. Yeah. I think it's the most popular astronaut in the render world. Yeah. <laughs> he just made history. Yeah, we see we we see his astronaut it's all of a render every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really love his breakdown video. And then while watching this video, I found that he made mountain using just one portals. So it was really shocked for me. Because I thought he made how did he make that realistic mountain? And this was just uh, one picture. Yeah. So I got the ideas his, from his idea, his his project. So I downloaded some mountains from the texture website and then I uh, did the cover projection I'll show you the where's that the tutorial of this you can easily find the tutorial just type the same for the camera projection mapping and you can see yeah this this is also really nice back in exposing for the yeah, this is also good too. Mm-hmm. This is really strong function. Um, this is strong way to express the realistic, you know, yeah. scene. In if it's even if it's just one picture, it's really easy and strong way to express your scene. And how I'll did you it. prepare the texture? For- uh, okay, I first made it. In the uh, from the Photoshop, just like this. Ah, uh, yeah, you prepare and, first the background. Yeah, and then I saved this as a PNG file. Yeah, and then we can, you know, use this texture like that. And where did you download the texture for this mountain? I think it was the textures.com. I, I remember. Ah, yeah, yeah, I know it. Sure. Dot com. 
there are some free resource and then and my company yeah. is one of it is member of is this website so uh, yeah so you have an access uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of resource oh, mountain yeah yeah the cool thing is there's alpha images I use this mountain in okay. the back and then I set up with um, just you know, for the you know it's, it's not octane but yeah yeah cool and then I made a scene like this yeah it looks really horrible <laughs> this scene it's yeah, just and really we see and we see the difference fake. between the texture and this plane huh? mm, yeah but because in octane uh, I turn off the texture when I turn on the texture, the octane, the preview is really horrible. So I didn't want to see that. So I okay, just so it off. doesn't work with octane. Yeah, for the viewport. Mm -hmm. But the render is totally different from viewport. Okay, <clears throat> so here you'll, you put your mountain in octane material. Yeah, to render with octane, it takes some time. Because there is a lot of polygon in your hero. Yeah, because of the character, and then also the water there has a lot of polygons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, to make water, I used uh, the displacer and then formula for the around the character. Yeah, I just rendered it like that, and then I use the sky texture for the background mm -hmm. in after effects yeah and then because, I delete, because here yeah. you, you have the alpha in background yeah of course so yeah i made render it like that and then i compose the background in after effects yeah just like this Mm -hmm. And then I deleted every point it's not seen in the showing in the camera. Ah, uh, to optimize the what render. It? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's worked or not, but I wanted to just you know uh, optimize everything because there are there are a lot of polygons for the you know water. Yeah, I see yeah. that. But the render time is really, really short because there are, if, if there are many polygons, when I click the render button, they calculate a lot of polygons. But you no, know, it is it, this is just a you know, feature, feature, feature. There's not a lot of reflection and refraction, so it doesn't take very long time to render. Mm -hmm. You yeah, just seven seconds. You just have a reflection with your. Speak, uh, your material, your water material. Yeah, it's just, just to normal default, you know, yeah. <laughs> material. Yeah, specular material. It's the default specular material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good, why good it's, it's not that it's not that realistic actually, because it's it's like a, you know, like eyes or mirror or something. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I didn't really care about that. But uh, some may use the same thing in uh, his composition, Opofine X. Mm, really? A simple specular material. To, yeah. I'd... To obtain uh, a mirror between the sky mm. and the water. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's it for this scene, mm. I think. And then... Uh, I wanted to show you how to make the uh, light ray yeah because someone asked me how to make the uh, delay in octane but it's really simple this scene i also rendered you know two two different two different render because to make a uh, light ray, yeah. I we need to you know make a fog 
but if I render it everything um, uh, in once, okay. it takes really long time because in this scene there are so much specular and reflection and reflection, mm -hmm. and then there are so many polygons and objects. It's a huge scene. Yeah, so it's so heavy scenes. It took very long time to render. Yeah. So I found the idea just separate the light ray and the render. Mm -hmm. So when I made the light ray, I use put everything just to with uh, just black diffuse material, mm -hmm. which is just black. They don't reflect and they don't reflect yeah. anything. Yeah. So, and then I use the uh, yeah plain fog, and we, we can easily get the uh, light ray. So, in this way, the render it's more light. Yeah, much more light. Yeah, and it, it's it's pretty noisy, but mm -hmm. it doesn't take really long time. Yeah, you can see the outside. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, so dark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I use the same light as uh, the normal scene, and and we can you can easily get uh, light ray with this way. The light as uh, the render setting, it's just a direct direct light, mm -hmm. and then. Also, GI mode is even non. Yeah, no global animation. Yeah, and then I don't have to, you know, increase the diffuse and close depths. And then I render it and combine in After Effect. Like this. Like a pass. Yeah, like a pass. I use the light ray as a pass. Mm -hmm. And then this is the ray. Mm -hmm. It's so clean. And you use blend mode for the pass, to combine the pass. Screen mode is not good for this scene because I normally, you know, this 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 is for the just the highlight. Mm -hmm. And then I use this as a normal mode. Yeah. You can see. But I, you know, this omert when I use the omert we can, you know, we can uh, erase the black, black part, mm -hmm. and because if I set the screen mode, uh, some bright part is more brighter. If I set the screen mode, add mode, some part is much more brighter. Yeah, like a, a bright, bright part is brighter. That happened. That's that's uh, something problem happens sometimes. So I normally, when I use the fog, when I mm, use the light pass or the fog or the smoke, I just set these to the normal and then I use the onward. Yeah. It's, uh, it's it. like a mask. Yeah, yeah it's like a, mm, just a mask, mask. And you just uh, pull off the black color. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Cool trick. Yes. And we see also in the scene the animation of the fruit. Did you use MoGraph? I used MoGraph and actually MoGraph is not that perfect. I made them part with my hand. Okay. Each okay. asset by a keyframe. Yeah, some okay. some part. Okay, some part. Yeah, this is uh, 26. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Okay, I use the cloner. Ah, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, because I have to order the mm, align the fruits in the bucket. Yeah. So I use the fracture and. There's some fruits I just to made the keep made animation. Yeah, we see. 
like this, you know, because yeah. everything is not perfect. So mm -hmm. some 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 fruits is I use the planet factor, and then some fruit is just made animation by myself. It's it's so simple actually. <laughs> it's really easy to make in Cinema 4D. So simple, but like I say, it's for a great idea. Mm. Because I think Thank you the, the most difficult step is to find an idea and a clear concept. Yes, it is really simple. And then when I make some scene, I delete almost everything if there's that's showing in the camera. Yeah. So I delete everything in the room. <laughs> you, you, you don't need a lot of uh, a lot of object. You just need uh, the object yeah. in front of the camera. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, that's how I optimize the render time. And then actually, in my at that time, I work in the in my company, <coughs> which is Giant Step. In company, there are uh, many GPU machines. Yeah, because like, in your uh, in your computer, you have two GPU at a time. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not enough to render everything. So. I normally work on my project in my home and in my home and I render it at the company. My company has um, eight, eight GPU machine and then each machine has uh, four, uh, four graphic cards. Do you have anything to... Mm, I'm curious to see eight? your... your... <clears throat> UI animation on the head. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I made animation in After Effects. Yeah, and it's a, it's a UV texture. Yeah, 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 that's right. There's a UV texture. Ah, yeah, with wireframe. Yeah. Did you make the, the UI texture on After Effects or? I first I designed the UI, yeah. this kind of things in from the Photoshop and yeah. Cinema 4D, and then I bring into the After Effects and then I animate it. It's really simple. Yeah, and you just uh, made a sequence of uh, this composition. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I use this as a texture. Really cool trick. Okay, I think here we see uh, the most of your process for the concept, mm -hmm. for the animation, for little types and tricks on Octane and After Effects. Mm -hmm. I think we we see also your workflow between the both program and Photoshop also. Yeah. Here is your site. Yeah, this is my, I recently made my site and yeah. you can see my work. Yeah, and we, then we see also your show. last uh, character modeling. I really like this character. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. This is like soldier. It's from a, a Japanese movie, no? Uh, it's from Japanese animation, but okay. the Korean Korean movie director recently uh, shoot the animation. He, he made the movie with that animation. Okay. So I thought his this character looks really surreal and cool. I really like his red eye. Mm -hmm. And then I recently started to studying study character modeling and UV unwrapping and texturing. So I want to just try, try to make this character. Yeah, and to, so I made it, and yeah. to fight in your skills. Yeah, to increase my modeling skills. And yeah. I, I, I didn't even know how to UV unwrap before. And did you, <laughs> now, did you make no, uh, NV unwrap on Cinema 4D or Substance Painter? Uh, I unwrapped it. From 3D quote, okay, ah, which yeah, is really really easy. Yeah, this is really easy to you know, UV unwrap. Jama Jurabarev also used this program on uh, his uh, Learn Squared class. Ah, really? Yeah, for concept I... design. Oh, I totally see that. Yeah. <laughs> Tutorial. Mm. Must to see. <laughs> okay. Thanks so no, much, uh, Taihon. No. Yeah, thank you very much. It's it's actually two thirty seven in the morning here. <laughs> it's quite quite sleepy, sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. What time is it there anyway? Uh, here in Belgium, seven o'clock, seven p.m. Oh, it's cool. I think you have to eat some dinner. Yeah. It's dinner time. I need to go in the dinner line. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay. I think, yeah. Uh, thank you, you so you, much. You need to sleep for now. inviting me. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll sleep. It's so hot here. So. Uh, in Belgium too. Yeah, it's so hot. I don't know why it's so hot in DC. Crazy, okay, crazy anyway. weather. Yeah, that's right. And thank you for inviting me, and I'm so honored to be here. And it's, although it's my first time to explain in English, yeah. and I just try to do my best. A big challenge. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, for me, it's, it's also a big challenge, challenge uh, because uh, every day I speak in French, for, of course. Thanks so much, man. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And nice to you. And okay, see you later. Good night and hope to see you later. Thank you very much. Bye bye, Tehun. Yeah, bye.